Hello and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, I'm in the process of building my first plastic model kit, which is a 1968 Volkswagen Beetle. Today we get to use the desktop spray paint booth I built in a previous video. If you'd like to check that out, I'll put a link up in the corner. Here I have it sitting on a desk, exhausting out the window, and it's working quite nicely. All the fumes are going out the window, and I haven't even needed to use a respirator. If you don't have a way to exhaust fumes, I do not recommend using any kind of a lacquer, aerosol, or solvent-based paint indoors without a respirator and proper ventilation. Here I'm using Krylon Indoor Outdoor Spray Primer. I picked it up at the hardware store. It's gone on really nice and it's left a very smooth finish and I haven't needed to sand much of anything except maybe a place or two where I messed up. In the beginning, I was a bit concerned that the primer would obscure the finer details on the parts but I can't tell the difference overall, it looks good. So far we've gotten the front and rear suspension along with the front fenders, uh, seats, a couple of body parts with the bonnet and the engine cover, which I've learned is called the engine cover. I primed all the larger parts, but in hindsight, I really should have primed most of the smaller parts also. The Tester's uh, acrylic paint I'm using in the little bottles just didn't go on very well, which you'll see coming up shortly. I did primer a few of the interior components and it did make a difference when it came time to paint those. Some of these larger parts did test the spray boost's ability to evacuate the fumes, but it ended up handling it quite nice. I just had to pause for a moment and then it sucked everything right out. Here I have the gear shift, the handbrake, steering column, along with that long thing, which actually turned out to be a ball hitch, which I haven't decided if I'm gonna use it or not. Unfortunately, I had a bit of a camera malfunction when it came time to prime the body, meaning I forgot to push the button. But, as you can see, it, it went on rather nice. Uh, it's, it looks good over a large surface, and it did a good job covering. After studying the directions color chart, it became clear I didn't have many of the colors I needed and would have to mix paint and hope I get it somewhere close to what it needs to be. The tester starter kit I bought came with a, a little paint palette, so I cut it out of the insert to get started. Getting the paint out of the little bottles took a bit of figuring out. Also, just mixing the paint was just an adventure and frustration. I was trying to match gunmetal for the engine block, but I really didn't like what I was seeing. Before I started painting anything, I gave the unprimed parts a quick rub down with some isopropyl alcohol on a q-tip in hopes that the paint 
would go on smoothly, but I was disappointed in the performance of everything I had in front of me, including the old set of brushes I had rescued from the kids using some Windex complete multi-surface formula that really, you know, it dissolved the caked up acrylic paint and the brushes cleaned up quite nice, but they just weren't suited for this type of detail work. It, it was, it was kind of like trying to paint your wall with a mop. I did try to perform a little first aid on a couple of them and it helped, but not by much. Besides the brushes just being inadequate, my technique is going to need some work as well, so I'll be doing some studying on that. I took a hard pause for a day or so and ordered some proper palettes and, and some new brushes off Amazon. The new brushes made a real difference. They're obviously not the most expensive ones I could have gotten and it was just a basic set, but they had nice points and let me put the paint a lot closer to where I wanted it. I will definitely be investing in some better brushes. Even though these were much better, they still don't have the fine point I clearly am missing for detailing these small parts. And I'm still not thrilled with my color mixing abilities. That's definitely something I'm gonna to have to practice. This tester's paint's going on streaky in places and lumpy in others, but at the moment, I don't know if it's because I didn't prime them or it's the paint, although I suspect the former rather than the latter. pulled out some of the engine parts I had primed to try them out. While the paint did go on much smoother, it's still thin in some places and thick in others and the brush strokes are obvious. So it'll be getting a second and maybe a third coat. Here I gave the engine block and transmission another going over with a darker mix of paint. It looks better, but it's still kind of ugly in places.
I must say. If you're looking for an activity that will keep your mind active, I cannot recommend building these little plastic models enough. I'm really enjoying the challenge, and I can tell I've got a lot left to learn. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time to get to the end. The next video is an exciting one for me. We'll be getting out the blue paint again and assembling the engine. And if you'd like to see that, the link is on the right. And if you want to go back, the playlist is on the left. Stay well. Thanks again.